given this fact that state budget is actually mutual, is actually limited, and this is actually mutually exclusive, we are actually judging which kind of action that can bring a maximum utilitarian without harming another country who is in need with this data. We think that our policy is exactly the policy where we can actually achieve maximum utilitarian. Because the closer you get your proximity with another country, the, the bigger the benefits you can get of that country with this data. That's why we think that under our policy, we can achieve better conditions in terms of two things. Number one, on the idea of donor country. Number two, on the recipient country itself as a speaker. Then what happened with the opposition? Opposition say no, it's not fair because it can discriminate, discriminate country who is desperately in need. Again, this response is actually an obvious proof on how opposition failed to engage with our, our disclaimer on how we, we already disclaimed. We are not talking on the idea of humanitarian aid. If those countries desperately in need and really suffer in poverty, it means that it's actually already cut in humanitarian aid, and we think it is actually an obligation of every country to have those particular countries with the speaker because it's linked to a very basic human right of people, which is the possibility of the nations with the speaker. That's exactly how we set up in this debate from the very beginning. Two questions that, that we should address in this debate. First, is our policy fair? Opposition believe that no, because we are neglecting people or countries who are in need. Now, in order that these arguments to stand Mr. Speaker, they actually have to prove why their own neighbor is not enough. Again, we have only argued from the very start. In Africa, for example, there is already a gift that is South Africa to begin with to really help this particular country who is desperately in need. And the, the, the way they respond is not never showing how a gift in Africa is actually not enough to, to give donor to give donor to that country, Mr. Speaker. Because we believe on the balance of power in each region. Beyond that, Mr. Speaker, we think that every neighbor has also a strong incentive to help their own neighbor, Mr. Speaker. And we think that this incentive plays on two reasons. The first incentive is incentive on, on border tension, Mr. Speaker. If this country is not helping their own neighbor, there, is, there will be always an exodus. There's always a market instability and poverty. So if there's a market instability, your own economic activity, your own economic development is being highly compromised. That's why we think that AG, if they see Botswana is actually in need, we think that there's an automatic incentive for AG to actually have this this particular country, Mr. Speaker. Now, second incentive, why we think that their own neighbor will necessarily help them is because there is always incentive on image. It depends on how international society look at that particular country, Mr. Speaker. And we think that every country is driven on the how they perceive the international, international society. And we think that these two forms of incentive is actually enough to is actually enough to make this neighbor to help each other. That's why balanced power of religion can be achieved from the very beginning, Mr. Speaker. Second class that I would like to talk to you is which policy can bring maximum utilitarian? Oppositions believe that our model will fail to bring maximum utilitarian because it means that we disconnect another country, ASEAN country with American country that they believe that international relations should be borderless. Fair enough, but we have to respond on that, Mr. Speaker. Because the idea of borderless is not necessarily really borderless, Mr. Speaker. Because there is always inherent cost of distance. Not to mention transportation cost. Not to mention different characteristics of market. They can escalate your cost of doing economic, Mr. Speaker. That's why exactly we have only proved to you how proximity can actually achieve greater benefits to actually uh, can have a better benefit of international relations to begin with, Mr. Speaker. Because for example, like Indonesia versus Malaysia, Indonesia and Malaysia, then both of them are actually having a same background to begin with. Both of them is actually have a, uh, have a closer distance to, to cut the transportation cost from the very start. And we think that this proximity is really beneficial, it's really potential to boost the condition of both donor and recipient country, Mr. Speaker. Beyond that, Mr. Speaker, we believe that under our policy, we, not we, we won't necessarily discourage another form of diplomacy because international relations is International relationship is not always about development aid. There is always political agenda. There is always a multilateral economic relations, Mr. 
the speaker. So we think that this political agenda and another multilateral economic agreement like CAFTR or another group like World Trade Organization is actually enough to connect and link between country in Asia to country in the United States of America. That's why, based given this fight, we think that the argument on the actually bad image on the international can actually jeopardize the international relationship is failed, Mr. Speaker. Yes, ma'am. Other countries that is not your neighboring countries do not influence your own condition of economy. Actually, it's not fair to put the burden of affirmative to prove that uh, a crisis in America never affects Indonesia. Yeah, we should admit that every crisis in another country affects another country. But things that we should look at is how the magnitude of the harm of the yeah. country, Mr. Speaker. And we think that the harm, the impact, is actually so much bigger when we are talking about neighborhood country, Mr. Speaker. Because the society is more like, most likely, for example, if there is an exodus in Thailand, most likely to come close to come to Indonesia, to come to another country in Asia, which is, can actually compromise the stability either, social stability as well as economic stability from the very start, Mr. Speaker. Now, second of all, on the idea of suspicious, they say that giving international aid to your neighbor will escalate suspicious. Really clear that this argument, the, the argument is against all forms of aid, because aid is actually always between connections between two countries, and we think the problem of suspicious also happens if under the policy, Mr. Speaker. China giving aid to the United States of America, for example, or vice versa, not necessarily people do, well, will not have any suspicious because it still link another country to another country, Mr. Speaker. Beyond that, Mr. Speaker, we think that suspicious would not happen because if you give this country uh, aid to another country, there is always a transparency. Because, for example, like Indonesia giving, uh, for example, like Singapore giving aid to Indonesia, not vice versa, it's actually uh, have a transparency because Singaporean from the very beginning have an incentive on their image. Look, Singaporean has already give this, 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 and Indonesia, Mr. Speaker. That's why we think that suspicious is less likely to happen. If indeed there is, if, if there is a suspicion, we think that international check and balance is actually enough to begin with. They start to investigate to, to begin to, from the very beginning, like board threat organization. If they see that something will happen between these two countries, they already ready to actually promote, uh, to actually initiate investigation from the very beginning. That's why we think that affirmative policy can actually bring up maximum utility and utilitarian as well as not neglect another country in this. We think that we are probably to propose. Thank you. Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. We from the negative side of the house believe that when you're giving aid, when you're giving help, when you're actually taking mutual benefits from the other countries, get, get, getting mutual, mutual, mutual benefits from the other countries and also countries of your own, we believe that distance is not the reason why you should give them or why you should not give them. And which is why, from the very beginning of our speech, a negative side of the house believes that in order in order to, to maximize the purpose of aid itself, we believe the receipt, we believe we should not prioritize, we should not prior, we should not let regional proximity to be prioritized when you are when you are giving an aid or development aid. Of course, we believe what the, the affirmative side of the house has been has failed to pro, to, to explain to us is that how by giving those aids to the regional development like in Mexico, America, United States of America to Mexico, it actually brings significant benefits in the economy will arise. Because we believe it's not about the senior so far, no. But we believe those helps will benefit the recipients and the donor countries itself. Because we believe in these high mo mobility countries, a uh, high mobility world, we believe priority, uh, we believe the government has failed to us why those significant, uh, why giving aid to Mexico will bring significant uh, benefits to the United States than giving those development aids to the other countries. Because we believe when development aids are given, it's not only about a country of your own, but it is whether, whether you can put all benefits with 
the other people. Whether or not, it's, it depends on the market, it depends on the economy of, of it. When the United States of America is going to give development aid to Indonesia, Vietnam, Vietnam something, they have only inspect, inspect those markets and those economy over there. Will, will those Will those things will then impact it and give benefits to their own countries itself? And this is why we believe that the affirmative somehow has failed to prove what is the big, bigger benefit by prioritizing regional proximity. And I would like to have some clarification regarding the discrimination itself. Discrimination itself in a country, in a world between words, is show a difference between people or things. Now, our question is if, if why do we need to make a criteria, a, a pro a restriction that regional proximity must be must be more important uh, must be more important in, in, in giving development aid because we believe in all of the world it's about a domino effect all countries affected each other so there is no reason when they are going to say that when you're giving aid only to regional regional proximity it will only bring, bring good impacts to the bring good impacts to the country and not to the other other country, and which is what we want the affirmative side of the house to prove the significant benefits of priority that will be given. And of course, the justification of the new borders. They claim they have failed to prove to us what does it mean by the justification of new borders. How can you justify that their country is near or not? Because near is simply an ambiguity word. What do you mean by near? Is it because of the distance or is it because you have good relationship with their country? And this is what has been questioning from the affirmative negative side of the house from the very beginning. Now, in this debate, I will summarize it into two, two clashes. Firstly, it's about a principle, and secondly, it's about a practical level. No, Amar, a principle level, we believe that why should we not do this? Because we believe the essence of aid is to help people, and aid should be given accordingly to the needs of the recipients itself. So we do not see that there is a need to restrict or making a regional proximity in this kind of condition. Because government claim that they you know they will prioritize or put put the, the regional who is near to them at first to the nearing countries with one of the reasons is their reason the idea is about budget constraints. Now we see that no limitations of the final budget doesn't make the government or international relations with the other people because we believe living in this world is not only about your neighborhood but all of the words are all your friends so we can see that when you're going to gain that mutual benefits from it it's not only in in the country who nears you and second question is about the practical level why we believe that we can do this because we have shown you no we have shown you the harms of endangering the diplomatic affair by gathering groups what do we mean by that because in the practical level we believe that pro prioritizing a group of people the regional people means you're actually trying to make an alliance or group within that kind of country and we believe when the united states of america and also uh, Europe, they are already a developed country. When they are only helping the countries itself, we don't see that the countries outside that will be flourished. And which is why we believe that there is no need to make a regional proximity. But what is the need is to maximize the purpose of aid to the recipient and the other countries. For that reason, we believe that we should not prioritize regional proximity. And we believe they cannot prove, no, they cannot prove how the aid given to Mexico will then become a significant benefit in this case. Yes, Amar? The priority of needs is also exists under our policy. For example, there is a three countries in need in Asia. We should also actually assess the needs of this country. And it doesn't actually happen all over the world. That's why we think it's fair calculation then. Yes, I know. When you are going to give, when you are going to give aid, even in the regional proximity, you are going to filter to see the whether which countries are the best way to give those development aid. But our question is, why do you need to restrict that that kind of distance? Why do we need to prioritize those regional proximity? Because because we believe that distance is not a problem when we are going to have a development aid itself, and we believe. They cannot prove the direct impact of a country who has proximities itself. Now, well, while there are some funds and aids that are not given to the regional because it's all in the needs of its country, while the United States of America doesn't help or give aid to Mexico more than in the countries outside because we believe and they believe the needs and the flourishment of the economy of the United States of America and the other put those developing aids in, in the other countries like Indonesia, Vietnam, Thailand would be more better to helping on their own society.
society. And which is why we believe that regional proximity should not be prioritized whether when, when, when giving aid itself, especially the development aid. Because the idea of, of our negative side of the house is to maximize the purpose of the aid to recipient and donor country, whether whether or not they live near beside live near or far beside us. Because from the very beginning we do not believe that distance is the problem to help people. It's about willingness and to create a mutual benefit for people. Thank you. Close enough to them and outweigh the needs of other countries, which is far enough. And 
then and then lastly, and how does negative cell of the house putting the right measurement, which is need, the needs of the country into uh, into the decision making process while giving a rather than considering distance, which is not pretty much acceptable uh, and, and serves the purpose of the aid. Um, so this is why our case still stands. Isadana Imran or Romiteo would like to help me to improve my capability as speakers. I was really glad for them to do so at the very beginnings. But I have to remember that they also have other fellow debaters in Singapore that they need to help at the very beginnings before they are actually helping me which come from other regions. Meanwhile, I'm gonna be okay with the help from Jaren, with the help from Sabar, with the help from Brian Budawan, or even from my two best friends from Mark and Brian at the when you're actually mentioning some things about how you're going to give the needs, you're not only talking about whether or not these people are really in this threat unit or not, but you're also taking the information, which is the magnitude of the benefit that you're going to give for both of the people or for both of the of the of, of for the for the recipients. Because I don't want to burn Sadana Imran or Arvindio to actually to pay for the tickets for every week because we have debates in every week. That's, that's what we are going to propose in the debate today. This is not a debate about why USA should help Mexico to prevent, to help Mexico at the very beginning and to prevent the harm from Mexico like illegal immigrants. Which, uh, meanwhile, they should not in the status quo like helping Middle East that was politically biased at the very beginning. Yeah. This is why you want to prioritize these funds coming up from these donor countries just to the regions for, help, for, help to, for the benefit of both at the very beginning. So, what are the debates we are talking about? Firstly, we are talking about which one is the prior appropriate measure and how it's going to work. Second, how it's going to be benefit for the for both of the things. But let me mention some minor, uh, minor problems, not minor, major problems coming up from the other house. Firstly, they never justify to us why this country, these two countries, have the right to prioritize their health and, and their, their aid uh, to, to their fellow region areas. And also, they never prove to us that their models have, the, have, have more magnitude, magnitude of benefits that will be given for both the actors. And I thought, well, why for the parameters that needs is in the status quo could not be satisfied? Because we are clearly talking to you at the very beginning that needs itself doesn't necessarily be satisfied. Because even in the regional proximity, that these three, if there's three countries that we need, we are also going to assess their needs at the very beginning. And not to mention that when it happens in other, other regions, other regions will also assess, like in Africa. So Africa and Egypt will also assess if like if like three three countries need help at the very beginning. So therefore we believe that in the problem, even though we're going to accept the premise of needs, we also have fulfilled that in our role. And also, when they believe that it will be a discrimination, because they believe that the appropriate measure should not be about discrimination. We are not saying that by implementing our proposals, we are going to neglect the idea of actually helping, because we believe that in the subscribe like a culture, the name has already been assessed. Not to mention that there is other alternatives, such as the ADB, UN, and so on and so forth. They never touch that until the end of the debate. So I do believe that at this pro at this measure of appropriate decision as well as how it's going to work, we're going to win. Because we're also talking to you about this is there is a higher interest in the regional proximity that will build help to ensure the effectiveness of these proposals, as well as enhancing the usage because there will be interest, as well as we're going to help that when a country really have their interest because then what happens in their country when in neighboring countries will affect really their, their countries at the very beginning. And that's why we believe that our mechanism will be more probable to work. And uh, second point on how about the benefits happens in the status quo. We believe that they believe that it will give message to the society that this country is actually being picky. No, we're not saying that. Because my second and third speaker has explained to you on how by implementing this proposal, that we are not actually cutting off other diplomatic ways. There will be still investments, there will be still cooperation between these countries that not, doesn't necessarily mean send the message that you are still to be picky. We're only talking about one measure of diplomatic ways as well as relationship tools, which is the development of it at the very beginning. This is, what, this is the only one that we're going to assess. We're not cutting down other the means to actually have relationship and diplomacy with these countries at the very beginning. They never actually respond to that. And meanwhile, we talk to on how this will greatly enhance the development of regions um, uh, of, these, of these fellow countries, because we believe that the, the same starting points, like, like the start, 
then the laptop is really needed at the start school right now. And our proposals will greatly enhance that in the terms that it will help to equalize the levels of growth in the, the same countries rather than, per, rather than giving it to other countries that in the first time they are, already have enough benefits there. And not to mention that there will be alternative types such as KDP and other nations. So because of that, we believe that we should win this debate. And I'm, I'm serious about the offer. Thank you. <laughs>